Hi, once again. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 796, or 796 for the shorthand. And the topic today is, is your dating strategy run by the shiny object syndrome, or are you someone else's? Now, you may not have understood what that means or figure out how it goes together. I will explain. But before I do that, let me, let me choose myself, so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. There is a, there is a method to my madness. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't already seen that somewhere in the broadcast. I am the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, that I highly recommend because I'm very biased about it. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what informs my work and inspires my support of women in general. It's also what led to these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. So today, we're, as I said, we're at episode number 796. There's a few of these out there. And I'll tell you the back end, by the way, where you can find the replays and where you can also find me on social media. So the topic today is about the shiny object syndrome. Is that how your dating strategy is run? And are you somebody else's? It probably helps if I explain what the shiny object syndrome is first so you understand what the context is for this particular flavoring. So, hi Ray, nice to see my broadcast. Um, first of all, if you don't know what the shiny object syndrome is, it's kind of the idea of, um, well, one analogy I like to use, have you ever seen the movie Up, the Pixar movie Up, with the dog that could talk, so they had the vocalizer box on, and it'd be talking, talking, and it'd go squirrel and jump off to the side. That's kind of what shiny object syndrome is like. It's a very distracting and in the moment type of response. And basically, the shiny object syndrome is, I say it best. The shiny object, hi Della, I see my broadcast. I haven't seen you for, seen you for a while. Um, the sh oh, by the way, this is Facebook Live in case you're wondering who I'm talking to if you're watching it somewhere else. <laughs> I'll explain again at the back end. The thing about shiny object syndrome is, it is a very transitory and a very, oh, I miss you too. We should talk and catch up one of these years. I know. Um, it's the very temporary transitory experience because the shiny object syndrome does not lend itself to long-term consistency and duration. People who um, have lots of money will tend to be recycling through cars many, many times because they have a shiny object syndrome to the newest, fastest, brightest car. Ladies maybe have the same thing with shoes or with jewelry. You know what I mean. So how does that apply to dating? If you haven't already... Um, grasp the nuance of this <laughs> there is a hunger with a lot of people and I'm not sure if it's generational or um, particularly based on gender actually because it's not really one side or the other because both sides of the gender do this it's kind of the in blunt terms it used to be in the old days wham bam thank you man meaning get in fast get what you want and get out and quite a lot of people still do that men and women it's generally been men most of the time but women are doing doing quite a bit of it now where they meet somebody and they're already falling in love or they're already moving in with them or they're already having sex with them before the first date's even over. And that's a little bit crazy making. Now, of course, none of you, you've never done this yourself, of course. You know how that immediately go, oh, this is the one. Now, I must admit in the past, I've done it a couple of times myself in my much younger days, <laughs> just to be transparent. So it's not something I'm talking about as a theory. I've been there, done that, and it wasn't fun. It was in the moment, but the price was higher at the back end than it was in the moment. So... Ultimately, it didn't pay off, just to be clear. So, applying the shiny object syndrome to your dating strategy is only going to work for you if you find somebody who likes the same thing too, which is like short-term, brief duration, and get out. But if you've, been watching, if you've been following me or watching my broadcast for the last two years or more, if you've been watching any of them or some of them, all 796, including this one, I talk a lot about the quality and the depth of relationship that's available, which is the... I won't say the opposite, it's the, um, or the inverse even, of the shiny object syndrome. Meaning that you might, now, let me back up, let me caveat one, well, let me put one caveat on this. It's possible, just possible, that you might meet somebody right in the get-go and it's that love at first sight thing, which I believe, frankly, is a fallacy. It, love at first sight is a fluke, if anything. It's not a guarantee for everybody, so don't get caught up in the thing, uh, you know it's the right one when you see them. You might, you might not, just to be clear. However, once in a while, somebody, two people will meet and it will be that love at first sight, the immediate connection, and it will last for a lifetime. I have stories of friends of mine and stories of parents of friends of mine who have had that, like they, when they first met, they knew they were going to be together, they got married, settled down, and the rest of their lives been together. 
So it does happen. But that's not shiny object syndrome based. That's a deeper, I believe, a deeper, maybe even soul level connection that can happen. I'm not going to go down that path too far because I don't want to get the conversation about soulmates because I'll blow people's bubbles about, burst people's bubbles about that one. I have an issue about that. So, shiny object syndrome doesn't lend itself to long term, deep, rich, and rewarding, passionate relationships. Short term, passionate sex, perhaps. And as a friend of mine posted, which is what inspired this talk, my friend Jennifer posted about this rush to, to, for women to give it up or for men to have sex. It's, it's, it was, you know, it was great in the 80s, I guess, or 70s, 80s, and I, it, a few years ago. It was great in its sense, but it was also painful and, and it cost a lot of people their, their comfort, their peace, their safety, their security, their trust in themselves and other people because they were following the dictates of the culture. Now, I believe we've evolved beyond that, fingers crossed, that we have a lot, we have room to grow because there's such a structural shift that we've been having in relationships, particularly as the feminist movement has, I wouldn't say faded, but it's become less of a in-your-face experience than it was 20, 30 years ago. In addition to that, with the Me Too conversation especially, there's been a, quali- uh, there's been a qualitative shift in how men and women treat each other because that's, that's what has to happen, basically, because there's an evolution happening. There's a wake-up happening. There's a call to account that's happening. So the rushing into relationship tends to be more, more patient, more calm, which, frankly, I'm, I'm in favor of. And I talked about this a few days ago. I think I did. But how taking the time, taking your, your um, experience with patience again, taking time, yeah, all right, taking time, patience. I was trying to find other words and didn't find those two seem to fit. To be patient enough to get to know somebody first, to get to like somebody first. I was watching somebody's broadcast recently about how in her relationship with a partner, she would love it if they could just be... Um, like like um, first base in their relationship at times, right? It's not going to be sex every time. Where they can have intimacy, sensuality, and turn each other on, but not committing the act of actually jumping in bed or having intercourse. Now that's it. That, that's an established relationship perspective. But even on dates, and this is the this is the challenge I know for most of people. Most people is you get to that point. It's like, can you turn back? Can you stop? So that's one level of saying, well, can you get there or not? But more importantly, can you take the time without even getting there? without even getting to that energetic position where you start to get energetically enmeshed with somebody to get to know them first. Let me sidebar slightly. I'm not a prude. <laughs> Just to be clear about that. I'm not saying, you know, you should be you should, you know, hold off sex doing marriage type stuff. That that's that was previous generation and I hope nobody does that one anymore. Um, firm, I'm a firm believer in actually getting to know each other fully, including sex, before you get married. That's one of my personal things. Because for me if you're going to be in relationship with somebody for the rest of your life, why not get to know to make sure that they're the right person you're going to be with before you commit to marriage? Perspective. So there's, so I have, a, I have a difference on both ends of that conversation, just to be clear. Taking your time to get to know somebody sounds like it's such an old-fashioned thing, but in a way it's important because I have had enough experience with clients, or I should say I've had plenty of clients who have shared with me where they've chosen relationships badly where they fell in love with somebody because the other person convinced them quickly, they fell in love with them, and then three, six months, two years, 10 years, 20 years in fact, with one relationship, the abuse and the pain they went through afterwards was not worth the joy of the fun they had up front. If you don't spend the time getting to know somebody, to really get to know that person, which you can do very easily when you spend time with them, like duh, then you don't know what you're walking into. And it may be fine, but the amount of stories I've heard from clients and from friends who have been through abusive relationships, have been through relationships with people who turn out to be so different from what they expected, that it's not that rare. So rather than getting caught up in the shiny object syndrome of being immediately drawn in, going, wow, they're perfect, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, I want to get in bed with them right now, and actually taking the time to say, let me be patient. Let me check out if this person matches what I think they're like. Let me find out if this person really is all they say they are before you commit any, um, you cross any lines close to a point where you may regret where you've gone. It sounds in other ways, it does, I keep thinking it sounds old fashioned to say this, but in some ways it's valid because taking that time to get to know somebody, to enjoy each other's company as people, not just 
sex objects is a powerful place to learn if you can be in a good relationship with somebody. Because for most people, <laughs> I'm not saying everybody, for most people, having sex 24 hours a day doesn't work. There are some people who have done that. I did it in my 20s for a period of time, very brief, very brief, to be clear. But there are people who think that's the way to have a relationship. It's like, no, I'm talking about something more than that. Full immersive experience in a partner where you both are able to enjoy it. Yes, sexual union as part of the relationship. But you also enjoy each other's support, company, presency, love, expression, partnership, teamwork, etc., etc., etc. It's a choice, and I'm not saying that you have to follow my exa my example or my suggestions. But if you follow my broadcasts, you might have learned I have a certain particular bias, which I think works for most people. I like to think so anyway. I can't promise. I'm not I'm not attached to my ego. But having the understanding that being willing to get to know somebody and to really take the time for yourself because the reality of this is sorry I wait for that drop in part of this is to really step into your own self support because when you meet somebody and uh, he would, yeah okay <laughs> I knew it was coming up for some people the shiny object syndrome is actually an addiction to codependency let me say that one again. In the dating arena, the shiny object syndrome is really the expression of addiction to codependency. And if you watch any of my broadcasts, you know I'm a passionate um, what's the word looking for? Exterminator <laughs> of codependency. I'm passionate about having codependency go away to diminish to, to be nobody, nobody's trap because codependency is a trap. It's a, it's a victim experience to go through codependency. And some people in that, co that, that shine object syndrome are driven by having to be in a relationship with somebody, anybody, all the time. It doesn't matter if it's the same person every week or a different person every week. It's that addiction to be in a relationship that feeds that shine object syndrome drive. And that's a very unhealthy way to be too, because first of all, you end up being in such a lot of messy relationships, energetically and, and physically and spiritually, but also you find yourself not knowing who you really are anymore because you're so immersed in that relationship, you're so dived in. And frankly, it's, it's, it behooves you, he has fancy words, to learn to love yourself as an individual. Part of the detachment from that addiction to codependency is to really discover how amazing you really are by loving who you are, by appreciating who you are. It's that fixation or relationship is where you're avoiding dealing with, facing, and accepting who you are. So. That's the choice. Keep going into relationship, 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 addictively to avoid yourself, or just take time to actually step back and be with yourself, to love yourself, to appreciate yourself, and to really engage your own self-love and self-support. It's a choice, as I said. I have some encouraging words for you. I, also, I actually have some encouraging ideas for you too, which is self-love is, frankly, one of the biggest gifts we can give to ourselves. It's one of the most one of the least given gifts we do give to ourselves. So I encourage you to be one of the rare ones to focus on actually loving yourself. Now you may have been taught many years ago by somebody saying, you know, don't get too self-centered because you've become selfish. I don't mean that. Self-love is a tool to actually love yourself and support yourself so you choose better quality people around you in your life and better quality relationships in your life as well. And yes, I'll put the link in the comments for those of you who know what I'm going to do. I'll put a link in the comments. I will put a link in the comments for my book, as I mentioned. I will also put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation. It's a guided meditation with audio tracks and a workbook that will help you tune your own self-love instrument to a much higher degree. Codependency just seems in your soul on that one. Oh, one more thing. I will put in the link, as usual, I'll put a link in the comments to have a quick conversation with me if you want to find out more about what you can gain, what was available to you, and also how I can help you. Because frankly, if you're feeling any challenge in a relationship, I invite you to reach out and get support because that's what I'm here for. I think that's everything I want to say on this one because this is kind of one of those challenging conversations, but it's also kind of clear for me which works, which doesn't. So if you're caught up in the shiny object syndrome of relationship, dating, re perpetual, cycling through relationship, relationship, relationship on a short-term basis, when you get tired of that, because you will eventually get tired of that, it's time to do something different. Just come back to yourself, take your time, get to know somebody first, what a concept, 
and then perhaps explore a immersive, committed, fully embracing relationship. That's what I recommend anyway. I thank you for watching today. This is my daily broadcast as I mentioned, replay so you know where to find me. So this is my Facebook Live I do every day on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can find me there every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, seven days a week. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, where you can like my page and watch my broadcast there. In addition, I also put them onto my business, sorry, onto my YouTube channel. I write words in there. And my YouTube, ch YouTube channel is my name, Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Where you can find all these broadcasts in reverse order from newest to oldest. Same as on my personal business page. And in fact, YouTube is actually an easy place to search because you can get all the titles together. Whereas on Facebook, there's way more stuff on the page. So recommendation is watch them there. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, please put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to reach out to me on social media, you can do that. And if you want to get some help, there'll be links in the comments as soon as I sign off that'll help you get what you want. I thank you for watching. As always, I invite you to take this topic to heart, to think about it for yourself, and just see perhaps where you can improve your dating experience, because your benefit, that's why I'm telling you to do this. So with that, I thank you for watching. As always, please take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.